How's it going? This is Hoyman and today we're taking a look at the Kotobukiya Yamiyugi figure. So the front of the box you have a nice window display to see the whole figure inside. And then inside has this really nice sparkling gold background, makes it look really nice. And then on this side you have an illustration of the whole figure. On the back you have the window that's cut out from a shape of the pyramid. Looks really nice, adds a lot of character. And on the side you have the same pyramid to see the figure inside as well. The top you have a window to see the figure inside. You have legal stuff for the bottom. To open the box just open the top flap and slide out the figure. And then just lift off the front cover and there's the figure all together with its accessories. So here's the actual figure and I think for the most part this is a really nice looking figure. It's just really well sculpted all around and then there's just a lot of detail in pretty much all areas that you look at. So taking a closer look at the face, I feel that they've really captured the likeness of the character really well. Looks just like him and then there's, he has the really iconic striking eyes. It's very accurate. And then you have his really iconic and abstract hair. So for the most part, it's really nicely sculpted. And the tips are slightly flexible material, but you still have to be careful in case of breaking them. And they are relatively sharp as well, so you just have to be careful. And then it is very nicely sculpted with the zigzags and the moving on to the back of the hair. Really nicely sculpted again. It's painted in a nice matte red finish and it has some darker shades to bring out the details, especially towards the end with the purple. But I will say there is somewhat of a seam line how they connected the hair so it is somewhat distracting and visible and it does kind of detract from the figure just a bit but it's not super noticeable and moving down to a shirt you can see all the nice creases and folds and then it's mainly just the matte black so not too much detail in terms of paintwork but the sculpt really does make up for it, it just looks very realistic from all angles and then of course you have his cuffs as well, which are nicely sculpted and painted. Nice metallic use of gold and silver. And then down to his belts, again you have the nice silver paint. And it's very clean for the most part. And it looks really nice. And then down to his trousers, which I really like because it's a really nice glossy finish. And I really do like the contrast between the glossy finish and then the matte finish for his torso just makes a really nice contrast of balance. So it is painted a nice glossy blue, but you have darker shades to bring out the details in the folds. And you have like a very slight white wash over in some areas. So it looks like it came right out of the anime. And then down to his shoes, which is a nice matte finish with the silver paint as well. Very nicely sculpted. And then the base itself is permanently attached to the figure. So you can see the screws here and it has mainly just a rocky sort of surface. So you have the darker wash to bring out the cracks. And again, it does look quite nice for the most part. But I will say it does look a bit generic. Like I think it would have been cool if they actually had like a sort of base to kind of bring out Yugi's character a bit more. I don't know, something like a spellbinding circle or something. But that's just a minor gripe. But this base does work nonetheless. So that's the figure. Let's take a look at the accessories. So the first thing you do have is dual disc, which is nicely sculpted and painted. It's kind of a glossy finish, but you have the metallic blues and reds here. So it makes a really nice finish overall. And then down here, there's even like some shading as well to bring out the metal. And it's even sculpted. And then you have the cuff for Yugi as well. And then of course you have his deck of cards. And then you can even see the life points here as well, which is 4,000. And overall it's just very nicely detailed. He also comes with a hand of cards. So again, the nicely sculpted and detailed. I think it would be cool if it actually had some of the monsters on here, but 
It's just a very minor gripe, but nonetheless, they're very well sculpted. And then he has his necklace as well. And again, it's very nicely sculpted. You can see all the details and line in the pyramid. And then the Millennium Eye as well. And then it's like a sort of wash as well to bring out all the lines and detail. And of course you have the real chain as well, which is a nice touch. And then finally you have his jacket, which is the same style as his trousers. So it's a nice glossy finish with all the darker shades to bring out the folds. And then again, you have the sort of white tints of wash to really bring out the sculpt. Looks really nice. And then the inside is a matte finish with the darker shades. And then the neck belt is permanently attached to the jacket as well. And then to add these accessories to the figure, first you have to pop the head off, which is probably my main gripe with the figure, because it's quite difficult to pop the head off. And I'm always afraid that I might break something. So you just have to be careful and wiggle it off slowly. Like so, and then you remove his belt here. And then what I like to do is add in the necklace first. So you just line it up with his head. Like so. And then I like to add the jacket on next. So you just carefully line it up with the neck. And it is sculpted in a way, so it only fits one way. So you just slide it in there. Adjust the belt. Adjust the necklace. And then it can be a bit finicky. So you just have to line it all up. And then once that's done, you just carefully slide it back into the body. And the jacket does tend to rub a bit against the back of the figure. So you just have to be careful while you attach the head on. And then once that's done, you have to attach the uh, dual disc. And this is probably another minor gripe, but attaching the dual disc and then remover it, removing it, attaching the dual disc and then removing it does leave a bit of a mark on his forearm. So if you do plan on displaying Yugi without the dual disc, there is a chance it might get some scratches, but you should be okay if you just rub it off. But I'd imagine most would probably want to display him with the dual disc anyway, so it's not a huge problem, but it's just something I thought I mentioned. So to do that, you just carefully pull the hand off. The cuff comes with it as well. So you just remove the cuff and then you just carefully line it up with his forearm. And then it's sculpted in a way, so it only fits one way. And then you just reattach the hand. And then to attach the cards, that's very easy. So you just slide it into his hand and then he'll grip it no problem. Like so. And then that's the same for the other card as well. So you slide it in between his fingers and thumb. And then it'll fit very snugly in. It won't fall off or anything. So that's the figure all together displayed. So my final thoughts are, overall, this is a really nice looking figure. It's very well sculpted and detailed. And if you're a fan of the character or the series, then I do recommend this figure. I think my main gripes of the figure is that the head is a bit difficult to swap out. And then the dual disc does leave a bit of a mark on his forearm. But other than that, there are only really minor gripes and... For the most part, they don't really affect the figure too much. You just have to be careful with him when you swap out the pieces, really. But that's my review. Thank you for watching and enjoy some pictures.